Hi, this is David from Electric Teaching, and I'm continuing on with my quadratic formula uh, with Python. We're going to be doing part three here, where we're going to be adding Pygame library to enable uh, uh, a screen to come up, and then we can graph the parabola in question. First, I'd like to be sure that my code is the same as your code if you've been following along in the video sequence. I've had to use a different file, and I just want to double check that we have the same thing. Up here, I may not have had this before. These are all just comments. Don't worry about them. Just a way of identifying what I'm looking at. And I might have added a print line uh, for the x, uh, x equals symmetry line using the vx coordinate calculated. And let's just double check and run the program a couple of times and see what we're at. Let's put in a 1x squared, 2x plus 1. And you can see the symmetry line x equal negative one. And also the vertex and x-intercepts are listed. Let's also try one other one. Let's run an imaginary solution to see if the discriminant is working. I'm not sure if you have the discriminant uh, is negative three popping up for that one, and that is because I have possibly added that. So I just want to be sure that we're okay there. And make sure that I have this print line. The discriminant is the D and make sure you have that in case that is something you want to have printed as well. And here's the print x equal vx symmetry line command. So you may pause this and pause the video and add those. Today we're going to be using Python and Pygame together. So I'm going to add the Pygame library. I'm going to uh, initiate the Pygame library. So it's a command called, excuse me, Pygame dot n i uh, in it uh, with parentheses functions so this is calling from the pygame library and starting up any of the attributes or the functionality that we want to put into it there's a lot of different ways to start pygame this is just one of the ways in this lesson we're hoping to get a window to pop up onto a screen and go from there to get the graph and the grid and everything else that we want in the later 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 versions of this, the later uh, episodes of this video sequence. So let's see, the next thing we need to do is, well, I want to line up a font variable because I'm probably going to be using a font on the screen. So I want to line up this font variable real quick. And this is just, uh, I'll make a little quick comment that it is just a uh, import, uh, excuse me, it is just a, a, a font variable that I can use later which will use the system. So let's see, font variable. Let's go font equal. And we're going to go pygame dot, see how I'm using the library? Font, capital S-Y-S, F-O-N-T, capital F as well. And we're going to tell it to use the system font. That's what that stands for. The Arial system font in quotes, size 18. We'll be using this probably in one of the later versions uh, of this uh, video sequence, uh, one of the later episodes, uh, but that's a nice thing to have handy and get written uh, since we were doing some initiating up above. Let's go ahead and add in the new function, the new function. So we're going to get down to the last line here, right below print, right below our print line, and we're going to add in a new function down here. Let's see. Trying just to scoot things up into your vision so you can see it on the video window. We are going to define a new function called graph. I'm just naming it myself. Equation, graph EQ. You can name it anything you want. It's just the name I've decided. And the first thing we have to do is we have to do some pie game window kind of dynamics initiating here. So I'm going to first set up a window using the Pygame library. Okay, and I always try to use variables as much as I can. For instance, the width and the height of the window that I'm setting up, I will use variables. And this is so that whenever I am moving things or changing the screen size, everything below that is using the variables will have maintain its functionality and still work. And that's important here. Okay, so right after we set up the width and the uh, height, we're now going to do a screen equals, and here's how we use a Pygame library function again. In the display section of the Pygame library, there's something called set mode dot set underscore mode. 
has a couple attributes, so that's why you have to use an extra set of parentheses to put in the width and the height. So that is the first attribute, and I'm not going to put in any of the other parameters. I keep saying attribute parameters is probably a better word here. But I could possibly put in a comma and another parameter here, but it'll default to its normal one and works just fine if you leave it at without. But I wanted to explain why we have the extra parentheses there. We'll get a parameter mistake if we don't. Next thing I want to do is use the Pygame library to display a title bar, basically, a title uh, um, uh, name, uh, text, excuse me, couldn't think of the word. And it's called set caption. If you work with HTML, this is just like having a title in the header. Okay, and I'm going to have it put in the words quadratic graph. Quadratic graph. Okay, and just text up here, up like right up in this section up here where the title is of the window. And let's fill the screen with white. So I'm going to use screen, which is the name. It's calling up the name from here. And I'm going to do a command called fill. Command called fill. And again, it has multiple attributes. The first attribute is the color. I'm going to do 255, 255, 255, which should give me a white screen. I won't put in any of the other parameters. Uh, and it'll default to the correct ones. Okay, I want to also set up the scale of which I'm going to set, do the graph paper grid. So um, I'm going to have a little comment here explaining what this is. This is my graph paper scale. And what we're going to use is a variable k. And so we'll have it set up in k pixels, k pixels per grid. And let's start off with k equal 25 right now. And we'll probably very play with it. But again, I'm using variables so that I can, again, change this as much as I'd like. Um, later, I might change the width and the height for whatever reason or the k for whatever reason. And this now will have the functionality will allow everything to work. Every pie game window needs to have a way of closing it. Uh, for instance, when you click on this X close up here, you're activating a window set up by the program I'm using right now, which is the idle part of Python. And it's got an instruction that will close it. Well, we're going to set up the same exact thing. Um, so first thing we need to do is write a little comment explaining what we're doing. And this is where I call we're using the mouse <clears throat> and keyboard handling. So um, what they always want to do is you want to run an infinite loop to do this. So it's basically in an infinite loop asking, have you clicked on something? Have you clicked a keyboard? Have you clicked on something or have you clicked a keyboard? And so that's the way most of these programs work in Python, at least Python Pygame. Infinite, so we're going to run an infinite loop to control the window. All right, and what I usually do is just have a variable control when the loop is running or not. And I usually use a name like active and we'll make it true. So We'll do, what we'll do is we'll do a while loop, a while loop. And the way this works in programming is you say while something is true. So if I use my variable while active, it is now going to do anything in the set of instructions here. Notice how Python indented that nicely. To make sure, um, uh, it, excuse me, it'll do whatever instructions in here over and over again in an infinite loop until active is changed to false and then it'll stop. One of the first things we like to do is update update the um, screen. Uh, if you don't update the screen, it won't uh, cha make changes in the screen as you move or make changes yourself. So one of the things I like to do is have an update and have Pygame constantly update the screen. And so we're going to use the Pygame library, pygame.display, another display function part of it. And this one's called update, again, using the parentheses, letting it know it's a function you're calling out from the Pygame library. Now over here, we're going to do some keyboard and mouse commands or actions that we're waiting for. So let's do that, keyboard and mouse actions. And the way we're going to run this one is another type of loop in, in programming. This one's called a for loop. And it's this case, we're waiting for an event. And in this event, for event in, again, using the Pygame library, 
event.get, and basically this is asking, hey, if there's an action by the mouse of the keyboard, Pygame will recognize it. And then in here we say, well, what type of event was it? So we do if event.type double equal for the if statement, needing that. And in this case, was it a Pygame dot all caps quit? And that means it's clicking of this red box, red X up in a window. So if this happens, what do we want to do? Well, we want to say active is false in this case. Active is false. That way it'll stop running this loop. And once it stops running this loop, the only thing really left to do is after we exit this loop, let me get out of this loop here. So once we're out of this loop, there's really nothing left to do. So what I usually do is write a comment saying if exited, if uh, exited from loop, then just quit. And so then we give another Pygame library command called quit with parentheses again for the function. So let's see if this works. Well, right now we forgot to actually call up the graph equation anywhere. So what happens in, in programming, let me just review, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to read this function and that function, both of my functions, my my main function that's defined and my graph equation function, which is basically just a subroutine, a routine of instructions. And it'll then be called up down here below, but my main. So I've never actually told it to start doing the graph equation. I'm going to do that up in my main. So the last thing that happens in my main, it goes, hey, graph the equation, as I like to think. So now it's calling up the same program down here. So let's see if this works. I'm going to run it. It's going to ask me to save it. I'm going to hit OK. Okay, it's asking for some numbers down over here. Let's see. I'm going to give it a 1, 2, and a 1, just like before. And I've got some errors in Python. Let me scroll down so you can see the error and learn from my own mistakes. It said it didn't recognize Pygame. That says there's no global name called Pygame. And it tells me what line it is. The more and more you get errors, the more and more you learn how to fix them, which is very important so that you're not dependent on somebody else to constantly fix the errors. So I'm going to try to figure out why I didn't like the name Pygame and look through. Oh, okay, I see it. Now, I've imported the Pygame and initiated it, but I did it within my main. And if I do that within just my main, what happens then is that it's not recognized in the other routine down here called graph equation. So I need to move this and have it read immediately when it starts the program. So I'm going to cut it from memory here, and I'm going to put it up above and have it be the first things that it, the first actions that the computer does. And the first action the computer does then will be import the functions, uh, the libraries, math and Pygame, and then to initiate the Pygame. And then this should work. Let's try it again. I'm going to run the program, hit OK to save. Off the screen, way down below, it's actually asking me about uh, my A, Bs, and C. So I'm putting in a new set. And I have a window, a solid black window. And it looks like I do have another mistake in the set caption. So let me see if I can fix that. Sorry about that. I have found it. Set caption was misspelled. Let's see if I've got everything else right. Okay, running it again and saving. Let's see what happens. Ask for A, B, and C. I'll give it one. And there's the white screen. And if I click on the uh, window, by the way, this is a 400 by 400 pixel wide screen. If I close on the window, it should close, and it does. So this is good enough for now. We've got a working window. I think in part four of my uh, episodes here, we will go over on how to get the graph and the grid set up on our screen so that we can graph our parabolas. I'm David from Electric Teaching. I hope you've been enjoying this. Thank you for listening.